Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to try a stacking method that I haven't done before. It's completely in Photoshop with a little bit of editing in Lightroom. Um, but most of this uh, is pretty straightforward, not too hard to understand. And uh, yeah, whether you're on a Mac or a PC uh, and you own Photoshop, you should have no problem following along. So this photo was taken uh, about two days ago. Uh, a friend of mine and I went to the Eastern Sierras, found this lake with a beautiful reflection, and shot the Milky Way there for way too long. Uh, but I did come back with a bunch of files that I wanted to uh, play around with for a new tutorial video. And this is uh, one of the shots that I uh, wanted to work on. Um, I took, I believe it's 14, yep, I took 14 sky images and I took four ground images and I'm going to blend my stacked sky with my stacked foreground uh, so that I can have a, a very clean uh, polished product in the end. Now I'm going to just start with uh, Lightroom with my edits and I'm just going to select the 14 sky photos first. I'm immediately going to go down and hit remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. And I want to increase my exposure a bit so that when I'm balancing my white balance by increasing my vibrance and saturation all the way up, uh, I have a better idea of what's going on. So it's very cool. I'm going to increase my temperature so that it's pretty even. And I'm going to increase my tint so that's also even as well and it might take a little bit to get to where you want it to be um, but it shouldn't be too difficult uh, you kind of want to look for <laughs> kind of strange to say but like a muddy looking image um, at least for the editing that i do so once you're relatively happy with what you have uh, you can go ahead and reduce your vibrance and reduce your saturation back to zero uh, it's a very flat looking sky so I'm going to add some contrast to this image and decrease my highlights a little bit, increase my shadows just a little bit, increase my whites a tad, and I'm going to leave the blacks alone. I'm going to increase my clarity uh, just for a little bit more, more punch. And I'm going to play with the tone curve by increasing the blacks dropping it down, and then bringing up my highlights just a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna jump into my saturation and increase my orange, increase my yellow, reds a little bit, and purple and magenta a tiny bit as well. Now there's some green air glow going on. I'm going to increase the green a little bit as well. Um, I just want to have uh, I really like the air glow. I want it to be a little bit more punchy. So once I have those settings in place, I'm going to sync my settings across to all of the, the uh, Milky Way photos. And once that is done, I'm going to right click on one of the images, go to edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Once Photoshop has loaded all my sky images, I'm gonna go back to Lightroom and work on my foregrounds. So what I want to do is select all four of my foregrounds. I'm also going to select one of my sky images and using that sky image, I'm going to hit uh, sync and synchronize those settings to my foreground. And if I toggle between my foreground and my sky, uh, my foreground is really blown out. So I actually want to uh, reduce my exposure quite a bit so that it's uh, more in line with what my sky looks like and uh, that's actually really close. Uh, the reason you want to do this is because when you blend the image later you want it to be more seamless. Um, I'm able to like pull more information out with my uh, by increasing my shadows without the noise getting like too intense um, and all these like white dusts and specks I'm gonna remove easily um, in Photoshop. Now, the my foregrounds were longer exposures. They were three minutes each. They were at ISO 2000, whereas my skies were 
uh, eight seconds each at ISO 12,800. Um, it's 12,800 is ridiculous. And then the other thing is um, I get a lot of this more effect going on. That's what happens when you click uh, enable profile corrections. Fortunately, I'm going to be able to remove this when I'm editing my image. Um, but like this is uh, this would be so unacceptable for me. So I'm going to not click on the sky or just select the foregrounds. And once I've reduced the exposure for my foreground on that one image, I'm just going to hit sync and apply that across my four images. So once those are all done, I'm going to right click on this again and edit in open as layers in Photoshop. And I'm going to let my foreground images load in Photoshop as well. So once everything is loaded for my foregrounds, I'm going to right click and select all the layers. I'm going to hit Command or Control C. And then I'm going to go back into my sky uh, stacks or my sky layers, and I'm going to hit Command or Control V to paste my foregrounds in there. I'm going to hit Command or Control G to group them, and I'm going to rename them foreground. And I'll just close that for now. Now with my skies, I am going to uh, select all of those and also hit Command or Control G to group those and rename them sky. And I'm gonna start editing those first. Uh, so I'll, I'll bring it to the top. Um, now I'm gonna open up the group. I did notice that this top layer moved a little bit more uh, when I was editing it, so I'm gonna delete it. And then this is just gonna be a 13 layer stack for my sky. And this method is super easy. The first image you just want to apply a layer mask to. Uh, you want to select your brush. And all you want to do is increase your brush size. Make sure that the opacity and flow are 100 with a smoothing of zero. And then your size wants to be pretty large, but it depends on what the image is. And keep your hardness at 50. And all you really want to do is just uh, using the black brush, uh, you want to brush out the foreground. And if you hit the backslash key, which is right under the delete button, you can bring up the, the red layer mask. Um, so you can have a better idea of what you are doing and you don't have to be hundred percent perfect, but it helps to be pretty close. Um, and all you want to do is just brush out that foreground. So once you are happy with uh, your painterly skills, um, just on a Mac, it's option. You hold option. Well, I'll toggle off the mask first. Um, but you want to apply this mask to all of the images in the stack. So on a Mac, you can hit option and just select the mask and keep uh, selecting it and dragging it down and it gets applied to everything. Uh, I'm sure it's command. Um, on a Windows PC uh, or Windows computer. But once those are all applied, you can then right click all the images, go to edit, auto align layers and hit auto. And what this is gonna do is it's, you've masked out the foreground, it's gonna take all of your skies and stack them on top of each other, kind of like Starry Landscape Stacker does for uh, on a Mac. It, I found that this method is really good if you don't have Starry Landscape Stacker. Um, and I'm really starting to enjoy the results. So once those are all stacked, I'm gonna deselect them all by just clicking the top layer. And if you, I'll zoom in, you can see that there is very little uh, movement. Uh, because I shot at such a high ISO, it's extremely noisy. Um, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and remove these masks by right clicking on them. And hitting delete layer mask.
And then once I've deleted them all, you can see what those layer masks did. Um, if I start hiding some of these, you can see the movement going on in the foreground. So once those are all, all the layer masks are removed, you can right click on the first one and select all of the uh, images. And then I'm going to right click on one of the images and go to convert to smart object. So once that's done stacking, I'm going to go into layer, smart objects, stack mode, and median. And this is the difference in stacking your image. So this is with it unstacked. This is with the blend mode applied to it. And then this is unstacked and this is the blend mode applied. You can see the movement in the foreground. Uh, we are going to remove that movement. So I'm going to uh, close my sky out for a second. I'm going to bring in my foreground and the foreground is pretty easy. It's the same as uh, the sky. So I'll select all four layers. I'm going to right click on them and go to convert to smart object. And then once that is done, I'm going to layer, smart objects, stack mode, medium. Once the smart object blend mode has been applied, what we'll want to do is blend the sky and the foreground together. So with the quick selection uh, tool, I'm going to select uh, a pretty general outline of the foreground and trying to be as pr precise as I can um, I'm going to use this selection to create a mask on top of my uh, sk sky layer by turning the sky layer on, adding the quick selection mask, and then pressing command I so that now our foreground is on top of our sky. Now, when you zoom into the fine detail of the trees, you can see that there's like a little bit of trailing and obvious uh, artifacts going on. So I'm going to use a soft brush around 40% and then uh, using the white brush, I'm just going to brush it in. It, there's going to be a loss of detail in some of these trees, um, but fortunately the trees are kind of an accent to what's really going on with the sky and the mountains. At this point, we're pretty much done. The only other things I might do is use the dodge and burn tool to kind of play with my sky a little bit more. Uh, I'd probably use the minimization uh, with the stars to reduce as much stars so that it's more of a clean look. And then possibly, uh, well, definitely removing some of the green and yellow hues that are going on here in the foreground. But this tutorial is all about stacking in Photoshop, so I'm going to end this video right now. If anybody has any questions about this blending process or the stacking process, let me know in the comments below. Um, I will post a, a completed image at the very end of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good one.